Hello and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek and Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. This is a render I recently made. Uh, a snowy arctic scene with a couple of explorers trudging through the snow. And after I had finished rendering it, <clears throat> I wanted to create a greater sense of realism and have them make some tracks here in the snow. And I could have done this in view by uh, editing the terrain, but of course I would have to find exactly what area of the terrain that I was going to place the figures on and very delicately carve away some of the terrain with, uh, with one of the terrain brushes. And then when I was done, I'd have to render it, see what see what effect I did, and then go back and then render it again, and then go back and modify it again. And it, it would it would be rather time consuming, and there would really be no guarantee that um, what I ended up with would be what I wanted. So I decided I wanted to create this realistic look here in Photoshop. So. I'd like to share with you the technique I, I use to create this very realistic looking track here in the snow. So I'm going to open up Photoshop here and this is the undoctored raw render straight from view. And I'm going to start off by creating a new layer and I'm going to come over to my paint brushes. Uh, here, select my brush. I'm going to come up here to my uh, brush palette. And the technique that I'm going to use here works, will probably work just as well uh, with any other painting program because nothing that I am using here in Photoshop is exclusive to Photoshop. Uh, I do know that Photo Paint has a very good paint brush engine and uh, I believe Paint Shop Pro does as well. Those are they're really good for painting. So uh, nothing I do here is going to be exclusive to Photoshop. You can do what I'm doing here with probably any other paint program. So in Photoshop I'm going to choose Brush 11. Uh, any other similar type of scatter uh, brush would work just as well but I'm going to choose number 11. I'm going to come over here to Shape Dynamics under size jitter oh, I'll set that up to maybe about 50 percent now I'm using a Wacom tablet and a pressure sensitive pin so I want to um, set the control of this to pin pressure angle jitter I want this all the way up and again set it to pin pressure roundness jitter I'll set that to 100 percent and pin pressure minimum roundness I want that at zero scattering I want it uh, oh, at about 175, both axes, and set at pin pressure. Count zero, count jitter, 100%, set at pin pressure. Other dynamics, I want the opacity set at 100 and set to pin pressure. Now using a white color, I'm just going to create a, a test stroke here and see what what I, what effect I've got. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna set the bring the opacity up to about seventy percent. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna undo all that. Now, <clears throat> the to con to create a convincing looking uh, deep trail through the snow. All we are doing is the is is creating the illusion of light and dark because this snow material has no texture to it it's just light and shaded areas all we need to do is manipulate the colors here to create the illusion of these intrepid explorers trudging through very deep snow so with my pen I'm just going to start painting a uh, a path here that 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 these folks would have uh, made going through this deep snow, 
And I've been through deep snow before only because I lost my skis in deep powder and had to uh, make my way up the mountain to retrieve them out of the snow and put them back on my boots. And I remember one year I looked back down the hill and you didn't see nice nice little footprints like you would see uh, if you're walking along the beach. In, uh, instead what I saw was just this very messy uh, deep trench because of the uh, because the snow was so soft and so deep, you really had to lift your feet up high in order to unbury them with each step. And the result was I just left this very messy trail. And so remembering that, it made, uh, it made creating this illusion uh, very convincing. So you got several people walking along here. And I'm creating just this um, random looking mess here because I, I do know from experience that it's kind of difficult to walk in a in a straight line when you're trying to make your way through this uh, through deep soft snow. So maybe they stopped along here and looked out over the edge over this over this uh, deep hole and maybe uh, they started walking side by side here and then changed up and then started walking in single file here and then this guy branched off and decided to uh, check out things over here and I just want to create the illusion that these guys are not uh, like a bunch of marching ants but rather are uh, making their own making their own way through here and that, oops, that's it, that is a little dark I think what I will do is uncheck some of these options and paint some snow on their on their feet so that it looks like their feet are somewhat buried in all this rather than walking on top of it they're walking through it okay I'm not I'm not going to come all the way down here cuz you'll get the idea. All right, that's my that's my snow trail. What I want to do is I want to duplicate this layer. I'm going to hide my top one. I'm going to select my bottom one. What I want to do is come up here to image adjustments and hue and saturation. Let me cancel this. I want to zoom in here. All right, image, adjustments, hue and saturation. I'm going to click on the colorize button. Now, just so I can see uh, more immediately the effect that I'm having on this snow layer here, I'm going to bring the brightness down and kick the saturation up a little bit. Now, what I want to do is color this layer so that it is the same as the coloring of the shadows that already exist in my scene. So I've got this as a good guide. And so I'm just going to find a snow color that resembles the, uh, the, sh the color of the shadows that uh, already exist in my scene. And let me bring the lightness, adjust the lightness. And I think that uh, that might be pretty good come back to my white layer. Now let me zoom out a little bit. You can't really see anything because the, the white snow layer is directly on top of my shadow layer. But all I'm going to do is use my arrow keys and watch the immediate effect that it has. And all I've, all I've done is just, is just offset the white layer from the dark layer and look at the very convincing results. I, I know the further you offset it the illusion of the snow being deeper is but <clears throat> I think in this particular case if I offset it too much uh, I won't like the results. So I'm just going to play around with offsetting it and actually I think I want to move the white one this direction because it creates the shadow now on the left side of this trail which uh, would be would be consistent with the light source that already exists in my in my scene so I like that let me zoom out and unselect that layer 
And so that is creating a very convincing looking snow layer, snow uh, trail here in Photoshop. And again, this would work just as well with any other paint program. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can uh, benefit from using this technique. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.